Hey everybody, long time no YouTube or something. I'm Nelson Everhart, and we're back with another musical tour of The Spiral. I realize I have been slightly remiss in uh, covering the music of Pirate 101, so let's do another one of those tracks. This one is from Monquista. The level name I was given for this to accompany was called uh, Monquista Church Native, uh, but I, I'm having trouble finding out where it's actually used in the game. If you, if you know, please uh, comment down below. All right, so the description I was given from King's Isle. Gregorian chant, tutti organ Catholic ensemble meets orchestra, meets a hint of indigenous flute and percussive vocalizations, as if a hundred priests are dancing with five natives. Think South American Peruvian wind instruments woven on the tail end of a church ceremony. References uh, were the mission soundtrack. The world is 1492 Spain, but with small monkeys as the bumbling royalty, maybe kiss the flamenco a bit for drama. So that's what I was given from the developer. Um, I have remixed a little bit here. I've updated with some sounds. I had my sound library hard drive crash on me, so I've been spending the last couple months <laughs> kind of rebuilding it as I've had, a, had an opportunity. So you'll see some tracks labeled new, and that should give you an idea of uh, what uh, has been added. Just try and uh, invigorate it maybe with a little bit of um, some newer samples that I have at my disposal now that I didn't back when I wrote this in 2012. So here you go. This is Monquista Church Native Remixed. <laughs> And for the remix, I did put an ending at the end there just so it could be kind of more cohesive and provide some sort of closure. So if you've never joined us for a uh, musical tour of the spiral before, and this is the actual Pro Tool session, what you're seeing with the dots and, and lines and balls and sticks in here are the actual notes that I played in on the MIDI keyboard that's sitting in front of me. But I'd also like to you know talk about the inspiration behind the tune and, and sort of why I made some of the harmonic and melodic decisions that I did. So coming back to this tune after you know quite a few years, insert number of years here, I still like this tune. This is one of my favorites. I, I pick ones that I think the community was go is going to like, but you know, <laughs> it's a it's a good thing when I particularly like the tune too. With my sound library hard drive going down, I had to go out and refine all of the sounds that I had uh, used for this, and some of them are harder to find than others. So the guitar that I originally used is from a company called Indigenous, and I way back when I first got it, the sounds were really inspiring, and I I actually remember in, inspired a couple tunes from Cool Ranch and Pirate One Hundred One. So I came back to this to get that kind of Spanish guitar feel. 
they have since remixed this instrument. So I downloaded the the new version of it and the sounds are just a little bit different to the point where I had to I had to replay some of them. In the case of this sort of lead part over here, I wound up finding another Spanish guitar sound that I thought sounded better for for that part. When your your main instrument is a you know, piano based, keyboard based, you tend to start there as your access point into writing. That's your approach to how you understand music. So having a guitar that sounds good and it, it, it sounds like a guitar player brings you into different headspace. So we started off with this guitar. I was going with the Gregorian chant kind of uh, note that King's Isle gave me. A lot of parallel harmony here. So these are really just kind of stacked fifths and um, they're very, very parallel, which is something that you're normally not supposed to do in, in composition. And yes, once again, I broke out my microphone and uh, just stacked myself singing on top of it to try and give it a little more uh, life and realism. <laughs> So then we get a, a tambourine in here. I, I thought it needed a little bit of a pulse. Uh, so it's just providing a little, you know, there's one guy sitting in the back and he's doing the tambourine. <laughs> Try not to do anything, you know, the same way the second time, just to, to keep providing more interest. So that second time through that same phrase, the low brass and horns start to take over. Oh, and this tube is new. So that section's kind of pensive and slow moving. I wanted to move it into a, a warmer section. I, I did listen to uh, the Mission soundtrack that they had referenced, and it's a really, it has a lot of cinematic scope, I guess, is, you know, you're really imagining a church in the middle of a jungle somewhere. So it moves into these string parts. Now, I did a ton of work originally using a lot of different sounds to try accurately represent what a live string section can do. Its samples are usually good at one kind of approach. So one string patch will have good like long legato notes and another one will have good short notes, but they don't, it's it's harder to get them to go back and forth between those kind of things. Wound up combining a lot of different sounds. I did add this new uh, string patch. It's, it's not a new sound for me, but it was a new sound to the piece. I didn't have that, uh, that sound, which is uh, Symphobia when I was originally doing it. So this was the original uh, string ensemble sound. So you notice that at the end of some of those, you hear me lift the keys up, you know, and then it kind of, it cuts off a little bit early. Yeah, right there. Da -na, da -na. And that's a little hiccup that happens in some of the sounds. I mean, I mean, the great thing about a lot of string players is that, you know, all of them are going to cut a note off just a little bit differently and start a note a little bit differently. And you get a really nice chorusing effect that's sort of averaging out all of the players. That made it so that uh, patch also makes it warm is warming that section up even more, um, and then sometimes it can kind of, kind of mushy. So I start adding in some other uh, solo parts on on the top of it uh, to be able to hear the melody a little stronger. I love that sound. That's that's uh, an LA scoring strings patch, and it's you'll notice that it's there's some attacks on there that's a little bit out of tune. But but that's you know that will happen with a live violin player, and they adjust it and get it back in tune. So combined with the ensemble sounds, you don't really hear it. It just sounds like there's a little more focused uh, tone on top, uh, and then I have a new 
Josh Bell from Embertone uh, Solo Sound. That sounds great, kind of kind of for the same reasons, and I just stacked it on top there for even more of a, a lead tone. a more being a slower movement you don't want it to be boring you want it you want there to be interest in there so I, all these inside voices moving to me just like make just keeps it being something you just keep listening to and and just to hear how these different pieces resolve uh, and then i have another ellie scoring strings cello down here Just to reinforce that bass line down there and then these two parts are new uh, the flute and the oboe they're replacing uh, just a like a general woodwind ensemble sound that I had in there before didn't really didn't like it so I replaced it with the flute uh, line and an oboe line here and I thought this sounded really good This is something that I love doing with these uh, Cinesample uh, woodwind libraries. I have I have lots of Cinesample uh, libraries, the Brass Quorum Pro and the Woodwind Quorum Pro and the Percussion and, and Strings. And their Legato stuff, you can do some of these runs. You can actually play them instead of relying on samples to simulate them. And I think this part sounds really good. So this next section really takes off. I, I knew I wanted it to kind of get moving. So one of the things that the Mission soundtrack kind of uh, put in my head was the congas. And then we got shakers in there too. Didn't want to have like, you know, I didn't want to have a bunch of percussion in there, but it's just sort of a flavor. I have this uh, native flute. As an introduction into that. So this is from this uh, Project Sam Symphobia Library, and it's one of the bonus patches they have, it, and it really uh, gave a shot in the arm to this section that kind of you know takes off. We've got all of the the pieces here kind of building into it and swelling into it, but this just like sent it right over the top. I love when you can find uh, just more of an effect that sells the transition into another section. And that sound has a few different phrases in there. And I tend to use those as seasoning, you know, try and you got to get the part that you've written underneath it uh, to work as good as it can on its own. And then those pieces definitely help it all. So this track here is the indigenous guitar and it kind of gets us into that section. And then it, it drops back into the more of the rhythm guitar. So that's the rhythm guitar. Uh, this Spanish guitar, it was a, it's a little bit squirrely. The sound kind of uh, changes. So I had to play through it a few times and I converted it to audio just so uh, I, I had a little bit more control over that and the sound so I could get it to punch through the mix. So I did drop this uh, other guitar out to try and provide a little bit more space for this part to poke through. So. 
So I played that a bunch. This is this is another new part here. Really wanted that lead to be uh, more upfront in, in the mix. This is funny because this is Young Nelson singing, and then this part here, I was listening back to it, going, "Why didn't I record my vocals there?" So I went back and record them. So this one's this is Old Nelson singing here. This is Young Nelson singing here and here. I wonder if we could hear the differences. All right, Young Nelson. Here's Old Nelson. Nope, I can't hear it. That means I'm not getting any older. Um, I really find even when I use a, a good choir sound, I like to double the parts with uh, live. Even good choir libraries are just a little, uh, maybe I don't have the right ones, but <laughs> they're, they don't really, they're too static. I mean, they're too patty. They're, they, they don't, they're kind of mushy. Uh, this is more of a male part. You know, that sounds good, but I, I, want a little bit more definition in there that's with the live tracks this is without you know it doesn't sound bad again just needs a little definition just hearing a little bit of my um untrained voice in there too just gives it a little more humanity which after all this is this is trying to sound really organic uh so here's a part this was like a cello part and it sounded good on this string uh solo patch which actually has a bunch of different instruments on it um and then i also doubled it down here fascinating yeah there's some little discrepancy between the notes that I played out from one to the other. There were no woodwinds in this section at all originally. I brought it in and really liked it because I, I think added the the spirit of what I originally wanted the part to do, but I either ran out of time or, you know, I wasn't uh, focused on the section. <laughs> Yeah, so that bit is also doubled in the violin and then the horn, the French horn or else, French horn is also playing that. I really like how the, the higher flute and the oboe mixture is really cutting through that and giving the, the tonality of that melody line uh, something different. So this is a pizzicato string patch. I did come up with that part first and then there's a little answering, um, answering section. Um, pizzicato strings are, are usually a tricky business. I find in general that they, they, it, it's harder to get them to cut through a mix. So I have a few different pizzicato strings patches from different libraries. I usually go back and forth between to find the one that works in any particular situation. But in this case, uh, I used this boys choir uh, staccato patch to try and help that. <laughs> So there's a lot of slop in there, but I didn't feel too bad about it because the, gu the guitar is really the focus here. I don't write for guitar a lot. Like I said, keyboard's my main uh, instrument, but I really enjoyed writing these parts and coming up with some of the things you can do mechanically with a guitar that you don't 
you don't necessarily think to do with piano as much. And you can do kind of the melody on top and then have some back and forth with some of the bass notes and some of the harmony in between. Yeah, so so this C in there, how it keeps kind of going back to that to, to be providing a little bit more propulsion. I mean, there's a lot of arpeggiation and a lot of uh, just other ornamentation in it. It sounds really good. So I guess that's oh, over here. Um, this is the junkyard of ideas. Some ideas that I had for the tune that just got abandoned. A lot of times they're in the tune somewhere and then I'm like, ah, it shouldn't go to that section yet. So I push them later and later and later and then eventually uh, realize I'm just not gonna use them. I am so sorry. I want to apologize to everyone for even teasing that that was going to be something worth listening to. <laughs> it's not. I think that inspiration is a, is a large part of uh, what you have to learn how to manage. You have to follow the fire. You know, if there's something that's really inspiring you, you go after it. If there's a part that's like, well, you know, this this could work, you know, but I'm going to have to work on it for a bit. You know, that that tends to dampen the spark of creativity. You want it, you know, to, to some degree, you need to sort of manage this inspiration within yourself. And if a part's not immediately speaking to you, maybe it doesn't, you know, need to be used. I guess is a good way to put it. So that brings us to the end of this one. Really glad to have a chance to go back to some Pirate 101 tracks. I'd, I'd like to do more of that in the near future. And, you know, here's hoping that that's uh, something that will, you know, shortly be topical. My lawyers are insisting that uh, I, I have to be clear that I have no foreknowledge of anything that's happening. With the game, I'm a fan just like most of you, hopefully. All right, thanks everybody. See you next time.